We all know that space missions are clearly impossible without rockets. Rockets are the backbones of space missions. And for those who don't know, we recently made a video on Yuri Gagarin. And Yuri Gagarin was put into space by a Vostok 1 space rocket from Baikonur Cosmodrome. Welcome to another episode of Scientific Engineer. And in this episode, we'll take a look at the basic understanding of how a rocket works. Although different rockets exist for different missions, they all have same working principles. Smaller model rockets are propelled by solid rocket motors, but when it comes to heavy missions, liquid engines are used. For reference, we'll study the first successful and the most popular and the easiest rocket of all, the V2. And how can we mention rockets and not talk about Werner von Braun? He is the brains behind the V2. The V2 rocket was the world's first large scale liquid propellant rocket vehicle. So a rocket typically consists of four major systems. The structural system, the propulsion system, the guidance system and the payload system. The structural system is the frame of the rocket. In simple words, it is the main body of the rocket that holds other systems. Then comes the propulsion system. The main point to be noted is that the majority of rocket is just the propulsion system. It is the engine that drives our vehicle and since it is an engine, it needs its own fuel. So the two tanks that you are seeing here are of the fuel and the oxidizer. Now we have our body and engine ready. Now just like any vehicle on the ground which uses a steering to guide its way, our rocket has its own guidance system that sits on the top of the rocket. It has its own gyroscope and a flight computer that continuously records data and stabilizes the rocket and guides it. Fun fact, did you know that the computer used in Apollo 11 had a processing power even less than the smartphones that we carry in our pockets? That is a real engineering masterpiece. If you want a separate video on inertial guidance system of a rocket then leave a comment down below. Moving on, the final system of the rocket is the topmost part, the payload. A payload is anything that we want to send to space. It can be a satellite or even astronauts. Now let's take a look at how this thing works. The fuel and the oxidizer are stored in tanks in liquid state and to do so we need refrigeration, more specifically cryogenic systems. The fuel and oxidizer are then pumped into combustion chamber, mixed and then they burn and the gases are then passed through the nozzle to develop thrust. When the thrust equals to more than the weight of the rocket, the rocket lifts up. As the rocket moves up, it continuously burns fuel and its fuel mass reduces, but we still have an empty tank to carry. So almost all these rockets use a technique called rocket staging. As the name suggests, the entire rocket is divided into two parts or more than that. Kind of like two or more small rockets stacked upon each other. When the fuel of first stage burns up, the flight controller separates the first stage and fires up the second stage. Each rocket is designed according to its applications. And at last, when all the stages are done firing, the payload separates and the satellite is launched into orbit. Consider sharing this video with someone who you think might have interest in rocketry. Stay home, stay safe. See you in the next one. Happy sciencing.